I'm Kim St. Jean, and I'm going to show you how to make some clasps. These are the tools I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using a bench block, which in my case is an antique iron. You can use a bench block or an anvil. I'm going to use chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, cutters, wire cutters, medium wrap and tap, a number two metal file, a domed chasing hammer, and a ruler. And the black you see underneath the picture is a, uh, a work surface that I prefer. It's rubber. It's a self-healing, noise-absorbing, heat-resistant work surface. For this project, we're going to use 16-gauge uh, wire, and in this case, copper. We're going to use 20-gauge copper wire, and we're going to use 2-millimeter leather cord. You're not limited to leather cord. You can use suede, ribbon, multiple strands. This particular uh, clasp will work for um, just about any medium that you would like to use. All right, the first project I'm going to do is a hook to use as a clasp, and I'm going to use um, 16 gauge copper wire. You can do this in sterling wire, brass wire, binding wire, whatever you would like, but we're going to do the sample today in copper. And I'm going to cut this first piece three inches long. I'm going to take my file and just because we want our pieces to look nice and professional, what you're going to want to do first of all is take your file and on the ends here, just file a gradual slope on one end because blunt straight lines are not as attractive as naturally flowing curved lines. So I've got, you can see, just a little bit of a curve on there on one end. And now I'm going to flip it straight over and do the same thing on the opposite end on the opposite side. If it moves a little, that's okay. You can fix it. And I'm going to just take that blunt end off. Okay, I have my filed end of my wire now, and I'm going to take my round nose pliers, and I'm going to work down the tip of my round nose pliers, and I'm going to put them right at the end, right where my filing began, and I'm going to put my thumb right up underneath so it'll be nice and tight, and I'm going to curl away from me and make a nice tight curl. Then I'm going to take my chain nose pliers, and I'm going to come in, and I'm going to push that shut so that I have a really tight curl. And you can see where I filed it there, and it's like a, a head bending her chin in. It's very graceful looking. All right, now I'm going to take my um, medium wrap and tap. And the way you want to hold these is the, there's a rubber tube on the, the straight barrel. You want to hold the, if you're right-handed, you want to hold it so that the rubber tube is facing your body. This is the closest to my body and the barrels are facing, they're the furthest away from my body. And I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to lay it and we're going to use the medium barrel and I'm going to lay it so that the um, head that I just bent is facing me and it's resting its chin on the rubber barrel. Again, I put my thumb very tight underneath and I push away from my body and I'm pushing with my thumb tight against the barrel. And I to go all the way around until the wire touches the loop and remove it off of the barrel. Okay, you see we have this nice graceful curve and right here you can see where I filed it and it has this nice graceful tuck into the, uh, the wire there and it just makes it look very nice and professional and that's the important thing when you're making your own findings is that they look professional. Okay, now that we have the hook end of our clasp made, we need to make the end that's going to actually attach to our piece of jewelry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right below the tight little circle I've made and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a bend. So now, now it looks like uh, Mary Little Lamb's um, cane that she carried. And I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to go and I'm going to hold my round nose pliers in my left hand. 
and I'm going to come up and what you want to do is your round nose pliers are a graduated cone and you determine where you're going to put the wire here by the size of the loop that you want your piece to have. So if you want a larger loop then you're going to go down closer to the jaws. If you want a smaller loop then you're going to move up further on the pliers. I'm going to go kind of midway here and I'm going to make a loop that's probably around three millimeters um, inside diameter and you can see that there and now I'm going to bend this over and I'm just going to do a simple wrap around now this is really tight wire so you can see I'm bending it all the way down it's really thick so you're going to have to use some muscle and I'm holding it very tightly with my left hand and I come back up and I've made whoops, I've made a loop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to bring it all the way around. I'm going to pick it back up, come around again, all the way around. and tuck it in and I'm going to hold this end the, the loop that I've made I'm just going to hold that I'm going to twist my hand just a little bit and I have a loop at the top and I have my big loop at the bottom and I'm going to just straighten this out now I have this finished hook that I can use on a bracelet or on a necklace and you can leave it plain like this or you can take your hammer on your bench block or your anvil and you can flatten out this you can add a little bit of texture I'm going to bring this back down onto my bench block and I'm going to use a domed chasing hammer you can see this has a bit of a curve to it um, if you use a chasing hammer that has a bit of a curve to it it's a little easier to get your metals to flare out than it is if you have a flat hammer also if your chasing hammer is flat and you don't hold it exactly right you are you tend sometimes to hit with the edge here and get a divot rather than a nice paddle out so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paddle this out just a little bit You can see that gave it just a little bit of a nice um, flare to it. If you want this to be really, really smooth, make sure you use a, uh, a block that doesn't have any kind of texture beat into it and make sure you use a hammer that is nice and smooth. If you don't mind it picking up a little bit of texture, then you can use whatever you have. You can go in even with your rounded side of your hammer and add a little texture if you wanted to to it. But this makes a very nice clasp for you to use on any of your designs. Okay, we're gonna make an S hook this time. And this time we're going, we're using 16 gauge wire again and copper, and it can be any wire you would like, but I'm gonna cut this one at two and a half inches. And I'm going to take my file and I'm going to file my ends, get rid of that blunt cut, and on this one I'm going to do both ends. Now I'm going to file the other end, okay so now I have, I've gotten rid of that blunt end on both ends of my wire, okay. Now I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I've got that slope here. I'm going to put my pliers right at the slope, put my thumb behind and make a very tight curl. Now I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and just smash it shut. You can see where it does has the nice graceful 
flow into the wire because of the filing we did. And we're going to do the other end. Grass, turn, and squeeze shut. Now notice this isn't a real big loop at the end. If you make a big loop at the end, um, first of all, your wire is not going to be long enough to complete the S hook. And second of all, um, if you have a, a I ring or some kind of a ring on your pendant or on your chain that you're trying to get the head into, it may not want to fit in there if you've got this big loop. So you want this to be really tight. This is just a decorative element. It just makes this look nice. Now we're going to use the medium wrap and tap. And I'm going to hold it in my dominant hand and I have it in my dominant hand and I have the barrel that has the rubber tubing on it closest to my body and then I have the stepped barrel facing away from my body and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wire that I've bent and I'm going to place it inside and I have it so that the little head that I formed is resting on the rubber tubing and I put my, th my thumb behind so that I can turn it very very tightly and I roll it away from me and I come all the way around until the wires touch. Remove it. Now I take the opposite end and I do the same thing. I take it and I put it so that the little head is facing me and resting on the rubber and turn it all the way around. So here we have the perfectly aligned S hook. It looks nice because we have our little heads on there. It's a really good size for a necklace or a bracelet. If you want a larger one, you can cut it um, three inches long, do the cut, do the curls, and then use the larger barrel of the wrap and tap, and you'll get a much larger, you'll get, it'll be a little bit bigger of an S hook. But this is really a good size for a necklace or a bracelet. So now we're going to just uh, embellish this just a little bit by bringing in the anvil. We're going to put it down and again I'm going to use the domed chasing hammer and I'm going to flatten out the loops just a little bit to add a little bit of interest. And not only does it, it look good in my opinion, but it also work hardens the clasp so that I don't have to worry about it coming open. And because I hammered it, it opened up a little bit. So you just pinch those back into shape. And you have a very nice S hook. So you have two really great looking clasps now and you can attach it to links of chain, you can um, crimp onto it, but let's say that you want to use leather cord. How are you going to get that clasp on this cord? Well, I'm going to show you how. We're going to start with our ruler and we're going to use this time 20 gauge copper wire. Um, you can do it with 18 as well. 20 is a little bit easier to manipulate, so I like to use 20, but it really, it's, it's up to you. 18 will work just, just, just as well. Again, we're going to stick with copper. You can do silver, brass, um, whichever you prefer. I really love to make these out of copper and then patina them, and they're really awesome. But I'm going to cut four inches, and I'm going to need two pieces that are four inches long. All right, we're going to begin with our round nose pliers and I have four inches here. I'm going to come down um, about, I usually eyeball it, but let's get specific here. I'm going to come down about an inch, an inch and a quarter. Okay. And I'm going to go up and again, you're using your uh, round nose pliers and it's a graduated cone. So where you work on your cone will determine the size of the loop that you need. Now remember when I was talking about the loops that we put on the ends of our S hooks 
or the little decorative loop that we put on the end of our hook. You want to make a ring that is going to be big enough to accommodate that decorative loop that you made. So in this case, I'm going to go to about right here on these pliers because this is going to give me about a four millimeter um, inside diameter loop. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going about an inch and a quarter down. And I'm going to bring this up all the way up and around so that it's at a nine, it creates a 90 degree angle here of the wire. And when I take this off, you can see I have created the letter P in a sense. Here's my inch and here's my length. Okay, and this is going to be my worker wire here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my leather and I have my length in my hand and I have my leather in my other hand and I'm going to lay the leather on top of the P and it's running down the length of the short wire. Then I take my chain nose, I grab my loop and my leather with my chain nose pliers and hold it firmly. And this short section is running parallel with the leather. Now I take my long end and I'm going to wrap up and around and up and around. And I'm pulling this pretty tight. You want it to be wrapped on there pretty tight. And you're going to make this coil all the way around this leather. Nice, neat coils. Okay, and you can take your cutters now and cut any extra off there. You want to cut it kind of at an angle so it'll feed in. I'm going to bend back my leather and I'm going to cut the remainder of that short tail off. I'm going to turn this around. There's my leather. I'm going to pull the leather back and I'm going to cut the leather out of my loop. I have my um, end on my leather now. It's very tight. It's not going to go anywhere. And now we're going to work on our other end to get our hook attached. Here is my four second piece of four inch wire. I'm going down about an inch and a quarter again. I'm going to go to the same spot on my round nose pliers where I was before. I'm going to bend it around. I've made my P. Now if I'm going to use my S hook, then my S hook can just feed right into that loop. And that's what I was talking about, that loop being big enough for that to go in. And so my loop can feed into that loop and then it can feed into this loop. So I can do the same loop on both ends of my um, necklace. But let's say that we want to use this hook because we don't want to worry about our S hook falling off, which can happen sometimes. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take my S, my, my hook, and I'm going to slip it up inside the P. So it's in here. And the nice thing about this is let's say you're working with leather and you want to put a lobster claw on. Well, you can slip the lobster claw in here. Uh, you want to put a toggle ring on. You can slip your toggle ring up in here um, if you're wanting to use already made clasps. So you don't have to stick with something like this. You can virtually put any kind of clasp up inside here or links of chain that you want to put different things in. So you've got this option. Now I'm going to turn this over so that I have the short length of my wire on top. And I'm going to place my leather so that it's running parallel with my short wire. There's my, my hook dangling. I'm going to grasp my loop and my leather with my chain nose pliers. And there's my hook hanging. And I start wrapping.
there's my coil. I can let go now. I'm going to come in with my cutters, cut this at an angle, bend back my leather, cut the excess wire off, come up to my hook, bend my leather back, Now I have my hook on my end, which will fit nicely and make a nice finished necklace. Now you can liver of sulfur this, you can leave it shiny, you can make it in silver, brass, gold, whatever you'd like. Well, we finished your class. I want to thank you for joining me here at Education. If you have any comments or questions about anything we've done here today or any other comments or questions about Education, please contact classes at beeducation.com. Bye. <music>